Hey, are you ready to rank all of the best rides in Islands of Adventure? I am. Okay, let's pack her back. I have my camera, sunglasses, science, a hairbrush. I'm not ready. Maybe my makeup? We'll get ready on the way. Let's go. Alrighty, friends, today we are ranking truly what is best to worst in Universal's Islands of Adventure. But we're going to attempt to do this scientifically and objectively. We're going to base it on a few things, theming and experience, ride system and technology, nostalgia and popularity, accessibility, and must-do-ness. Each attraction is going to be scored 1 to 5 for a total potential score of 25. And frankly, y'all might want to stick around for this one. I kind of feel like some of these might surprise you, maybe anger you. I don't know. We're going to find out. For number 18 on our list, we are at what is one of my least favorites of all time. And luckily for me, it was scored low anyways, and that is Dr. Doom's Fear Fall. Let's get into why it's so low, though. So when it comes to theming, I can't even lie to you guys, the theming's actually pretty neat here. Uh, the queue is incredibly detailed and pretty immersive. Last time I was here with Quincy and we walked through the queue, I had never thought about the fact that I'd only ever gone through the single rider and we were shocked by how well detailed it was. So we were really thrilled with it. As immersive as it can be, this isn't like universal excitement, so we gave this one a three. For Ride System and Tech, the Ride System shoots guests into 185 feet into the air and then brings you down, but luckily, it's only bit by bit. It's pretty scary and unique for Universal and Disney World, and luckily for me, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but I keep my eyes closed. For nostalgia and popularity, while this one can be thrilling, it does not hold up to other coasters in the park, so it's not overly popular. Uh, Dr. Doom, although we might love him, also is not a super popular character, so team gave this one a two overall. For accessibility, this one is its pretty bad. I can't even lie to you guys. It's probably one of the lowest accessibility scores we have for Islands of Adventure. It does not fit all body types, unfortunately. There is a height requirement and you have to transfer out of your wheelchair, so this one gets a one for accessibility. While this one is tons of fun and it's not necessarily a drop ride like Tower of Terror is, it's okay. Maybe put it a little bit lower on your list and don't make it a must do. We certainly don't, so we gave it a two. That means Dr. Doom has a total score of 10, putting it at number 18 on our list. Alrighty friends, for number 17, we have made our way into the Wizarding World over here in Hogsmeade. And unfortunately, one of the lowest rides on the list is a Harry Potter ride, the Flight of the Hippogriff. Flight of the Hippogriff is an outdoor roller coaster for kiddos, and the theming of this ride is a bit mid due to lack of immersion. However, there is an amazing animatronic within the queue that you see as you're passing on the ride system, so we're going to give it a three because of Ugbeak alone. For ride system and tech, it's very simple. It's a family-friendly coaster, so it's not super tech savvy, unfortunately, but again, the animatronic is really cool and detailed, so we're going to give it a three for technology. Unfortunately for accessibility, this one's going to have a pretty low score. There is a height requirement for it, and you do have to transfer out of your wheelchair. And unfortunately, it's not made for all body types, so it's going to get it to Sorry Flight. For Moss Dunas, it's really cute. It's a nice little kid-friendly coaster. Unfortunately, with mid-theming and it's not great ride tech, we're only going to give it a 2. Overall, this is going to give our number 17 spot 12 total points for Flight of the Hippogriff. We are here at number 16, Skull Island, the Reign of Kong. That's how that makes me feel. When it comes to theming, this ride theming is actually super cool, but I can't lie to you guys, it's a little bit scary sometimes. There's a story throughout the queue, but unless you know the story of Kong really well, it's a little bit confusing. So, gave this one a two for theming. For ride system and tech, the ride system is not super impressive. It's kind of comparable to Fast and Furious, like I mentioned earlier, with the use of screens and pop-up 3D glasses. Uh, the only impressive part of this is actually there is an amazing Kong animatronic at the very end of the ride, so I gave it a three. When it comes to nostalgia and popularity, Kong is a super popular and nostalgic character, but that really can't save how bad the ride is, which makes the ride itself not all that popular. It can get pretty long lines, but that's mainly because of technical issues, not necessarily because of popularity. So we gave this one a two. For accessibility, you, there is a height requirement, but if you're in a wheelchair, you actually don't have to transfer out, which really is helpful. So that raises this overall score because we're gonna give accessibility a four. So for Mass Dunas though, it's gonna bring the score back down because we really don't think this one is worth the wait. If you know anything about Fast and Furious Supercharged, you just know this one's really not all that worth it, so we gave it a two. 
Overall, that brings Kong's score to a total of 13. That puts it in 16th place. For number 15, friends, we are talking water rides, and that is gonna bring us to Deadly Do Rides Ripsaw Falls. Ooh, this is a tough one. When it comes to theming for Deadly Do Right, this log flume water ride is an experience for sure. But when you compare it to previous log rides like Splash Mountain, ah, the tech just isn't there and neither is the experience. It's clearly just not as themed or as intricate, so mid, we're gonna give it a three. The ride system and tech, it's also just kind of a meh, you know. It's a log system, which means it's fun, of course, and it even adds elements to make sure that you get absolutely soaked on this. However, the less than stellar animatronics really kind of bring the score down, giving it an overall two in this category. For accessibility, guests do have to transfer and walk even a few steps independently, and there's a height requirement to be able to ride it. It's also very difficult to get into, even without any accessibility issues, because your legs are around a stranger unless you're in the front seat, which, I don't know, we just think that one's a little strange, so we gave this one a three. When it comes to must do -ness, this one is a must-do in the summer heat, or maybe if you're just missing some Splash Mountain fun. So we gave it a three. Overall, Deadly Do Right did not do right by us or our team, so we gave it a 13 scientifically, and I made you listen to that bad joke, so t we both lose. For number 14, we are what it, I think is maybe the scariest ride in, a, in Universal. It is the Cat in the Hat ride. This ride theme is very cute. It takes you right into the kid's house from the cat in the hat. However, that's probably the most immersive aspect of this slow moving dark ride, so we gave it a three. For ride system and tech, this slow moving ride does have lots of animatronics, but they're a little worse for wear, uh, so the tech doesn't really hold up super well, especially if you're a fan of the cat and his eyes don't blink at the same time, so we gave it a two. For nostalgia and popularity, this ride does have some really famous characters, which does add to the nostalgia of the ride, arguably the most famous of the Dr. Seuss characters, but the ride itself is not overly popular due to the fact that it is outdated, so we gave this one a three. For accessibility, we are less than pleased because I just thought this one would be better. I don't know why. There is a height requirement for it. It is not accommodating to all body types. However, guests don't have to transfer, which is a win. They don't have to transfer from their wheelchair. So we gave it a three. As far as must do-ness goes, I cannot in good faith tell you that you must do this ride. But if you love Cat in the Hat, give it a go, give it a shot. Who cares? You might. So we gave it a three because maybe you want to do it. Uh, but I don't, so. And neither does our team, who helped me make our list. For number 13 on our list, we are finally headed over into the Jurassic Park area of Islands of Adventure with Pteranodon Flyers. And this one haunts me. Here inside Camp Jurassic is where you're going to find the ride Pteranodon Flyers. This is a really cool high-flying ride. Unfortunately, that's only for kiddos. The theming is incredible and super cool. It actually makes me jealous of the kids that get to ride it because everyone can't ride it. I mean, look how cool that is. The only reason adults can ride it is if they have a kiddo with them. So I'm gonna have, I'd give this one a five for theming, but because I can't ride it, I'm giving it a four. For ride system and tech, this ride system takes kiddos flying high above the park on a really smooth and fun ride, although it is not for everyone. So I give this one a three, because that really bothers me. When it comes to nostalgia and popularity, because there are restrictions, this ride is only popular with certain groups and we wish we could enjoy it too, you know, three. Sorry you guys, it's just not everybody can ride it. When it comes to accessibility, there is actually a height requirement and a height limit. Uh, plus not everyone can enjoy this one and guests do have to transfer out of their wheelchairs. So there's a lot of accessibility issues here. So we gave it a two. When it comes to must do this, although I wish I could say that everybody should do this and must do this, everybody can't, me included. I've never been on this ride because I literally can't go on it. And maybe I am salty about that, so two. Overall, that puts Terrain on Flyers at 14 points and number 13 on the list. For number 12 on our list, we are headed back into the Seuss land of the world and checking out Kara Seussel. The theming on this one is pretty cute and exactly what you think a Dr. Seuss carousel would feel like. It's colorful, it's whimsical, it's fun, but it's still just a carousel. So unfortunately, you know, we'll, we'll give it a four. For ride system and tech, it's a very simple carousel, so not really tech savvy per se. Plus, the seats are strangely uncomfortable. I don't know what it is, but I do not like the seats on this one. So we gave it a two. 
For nostalgia and popularity, every theme park does need a little cutie carousel. Uh, but this one's just not overly nostalgic or popular, even with the Dr. Seuss theming, so two. When it comes to accessibility though, this one absolutely wins out because anyone can enjoy it. So we gave it a five, which really brought its score up. While this ride is very cute and it is very family friendly, unless you're here with your family, we don't really think it's a must do. So we're gonna give this one a two. Overall, that brings the score up to 15, putting it semi-high on our list at number 12. You can tell I'm trying my best to be objective here. I am not doing this uh, by my own personal taste because this next ride, number 11 on our list, would have ended up much higher on my personal list. Number 11 here is Storm Force Accelatron. This is a really fun, kind of enhanced teacup-esque ride. Uh, the theming for this one is really cute. It's kid-centric, so it doesn't have a ton of theming outside of the flashing strobe lights during the ride, but I'm a big fan of the excitement because it is a little bit more exciting than your average teacup ride. For ride system and tech, this ride is really similar to a scrambler if you've ever gone to Dollywood. Kind of throws you around a little bit. It's also similar to older carnival rides mixed with the spinning teacups from Walt Disney World, so not super new, but not bad. So that's a three. For nostalgia and popularity, the ride is not super popular despite my personal love for it, and the theming isn't overly nostalgic, so two. For accessibility, guests do have to be able to transfer from their wheelchair, but there's no height requirement, so we're gonna give it a four. When it comes to must ness I love this ride. I think it is tons of fun, but this one is kid-centric. It is not necessarily the most exciting ride you're gonna go on this day, and there's a lot of rides here in Islands of Adventure, so I'd put it in the middle and give it about a three. All of that to be said, that puts Storm Force Accelotron at a total of 15 points, putting it as number 11 on our list. If you truly needed to know that I am being as objective as possible, our number 10 is my personal worst on the list, Popeye and Bluto's Build Rat Barges say that 10 times fast. I don't even want to say it once. So Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges is kind of like their version of Cali River Rapids, that rafting water ride. When it comes to theming, this ride is actually really well themed. There's a lot of cute nods to Popeye and Olive, and it's pretty immersive, and I think it feels like you're kind of stepping into that cartoon. The ride system and technology though, eh, it's your classic raft ride. While it might be semi-normal tech though, you are going to get soaked. No question, no discussion. Maybe sometimes on Cali River Rapid, it's not too bad. Not here, it's horrendous. When it comes to nostalgia and popularity though, this ride is pretty popular, especially in the summertime. Keeping cool is kind of a necessity. So although I'm not a fan of water rides, you really can't understate the popularity of this one. So I'm gonna give it a three. When it comes to accessibility, you do need to be able to transfer out of your wheelchair and there is a height requirement. So unfortunately, this one's gonna get a three. Now I will say this one is very low on my personal must-do list, but I can't ignore that during the summer times, this can be a necessity. And frankly, it is a lot of fun. So overall, we're gonna give this one a four on the must-do list. Overall, that's gonna give it 17 points, making it number 10 on our list. It's a little bit surprising to me, but Dr. Seuss did manage to make it into the top 10 right back here. We're at number nine with One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is Universal's kind of Dumbo-esque ride over here. The ride is cutie, it has a Dr. Seuss theme, but it's not overtly special because it is, again, just kind of that uh, Dumbo high-flying theming. So we gave it a three. For ride system and tech, the ride system is actually not overly special, but there are a few aspects that are different that we really like about it. It's different than other high-flying rides because this one kind of has an involved game. The ride tells you a cute little rhyme on how to fly your fish, and if you don't follow the rules, you're gonna get sprayed with water, which is fun and different, so we actually gave it a four. For nostalgia and popularity, this ride is not overly nostalgic, nor is it popular, so a three. Luckily for this ride, anyone can enjoy it, which we think we need more rides that way, so we're gonna give it a five. For must do -ness overall, do we think that you have to do one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? Uh, not so much. It's fun, it's cute, it's Dumbo, and it's different. So we gave it a three, but we don't think that you need to do it. Overall, it's gonna give it a score of 18, which puts it at number nine. It's gonna try to be like cutie and do some rhymes, but um, I, I don't know how, so. So 
we're here for the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train. That's a rhyme in and of itself. I'm not doing, I can't do more than that, I can't. For the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train, this is actually kind of their version of the People Mover to a certain degree. The theming is super relaxing and it's pretty well themed, plus there's some famous Dr. Seuss stories in it, so I'm gonna give it a five, be a little generous. The ride system and tech is pretty unique and offers a pretty high capacity. The most impressive part of the ride though is that there's actually different drags which adds a re-rideability and it makes it a little bit more unique than even something like the People Mover, so four. For nostalgia and popularity, this one's very cute, it's relaxing, and it is iconic Dr. Seuss that adds that nostalgia. Because it's relaxing and it normally has a low weight, uh, you could say it's popular-ish, but we're going to give this one a three. I had thought this one would be a little bit more accessible, but unfortunately it's really not. There is a height requirement for this one, and you do have to transfer out of your wheelchair. Plus, it's potentially not accommodating to all body types, which we just don't really love, so we're going to give it a two. For Mouse Dunas, it's really cute, it's relaxing. I personally really like it, but I'm also a big People Mover fan. So team-wise, we gave this one a four for Mouse Dunas. Overall, that's gonna give it a whopping 18 and put it at number eight on our list. When you first walk into Islands of Adventure and go to your left, the first ride you're gonna come to is number seven on our list, and that is the Incredible Hulk Coaster. When it comes to theming, the Incredible Hulk coaster is actually pretty well themed in our opinion as a team. The queue is really immersive and it even adds a little bit of storytelling so that way you can kind of feel like you are being turned into a Hulk yourself. It's a favorite of ours theming wise and just overall tons of fun. So we're gonna give this one a four. For ride system and tech, this features a really cool, tough launch at the beginning that launches up to 67 miles per hour with seven different inversions on this coaster. That is really impressive. We're gonna give it a four. When it comes to popularity and nostalgia, this ride actually opened in May 1999. It is super nostalgic though because of that to Universal fans. Adding this iconic character only increases that popularity so this one is gonna get a four in this category. When it comes to accessibility, guests do have to be able to exit from their wheelchairs. And unfortunately, the ride system is not for all body types and there's a height requirement. We're gonna have to give this one a one because of those factors. And if you're nervous about not fitting on the ride system, don't worry, there are some test seats out here in the front. In our opinion, this ride is super fun. It is a must do if you're able to. And because of that, we're gonna give it a five out of five. Overall, this score gives the Hulk an 18, putting it at number seven on our list. Do you think he would Hulk out over that? Do you think he'd be okay with seven? I'm not gonna ask him. For number six on our list, it's time to put on your robes and put on your ties because we're headed to Hogwarts, baby, for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. For theming for this one, it cannot be understated. For Harry Potter fans in particular, this queue is so immaculately detailed and thought out. The ride itself is the journey through different Harry Potter iconic spots, which is also just a cool experience theming-wise. So five out of five for theming and experience. For ride system and tech, this ride is amazing, in our opinion at least. Between the mix of screen and practical effects, it's a leveled up version of Universal's traditional ride system. However, the screens are still there, so we're only gonna give it a four. When it comes to nostalgia and popularity, it's probably the least popular of the Harry Potter rides in both parks. We'll give it a three. For accessibility, there is a height requirement and you have to transfer out of your wheelchair. And unfortunately, not all body types are gonna be accommodated for this one, so it gets a pretty low accessibility score as a two. When it comes to must do -ness, this is an incredible Harry Potter ride, especially if you're a fan of the books. It's not the best of the Harry Potter rides, but you get to go in, you get to be immersed, you feel like you're in the wizarding world. So I think it's a must do, I think it's a five out of five, and I know that our team agrees with me. Overall, Forbidden Journey is gonna get a total score of 19, putting it in the number six spot Spot. and also there's a bird that flew past me that really scared me. Number six, Forbidden Journey. Drum roll please, friends, because we have finally made it to our top five, and in the number five spot is the Hogwarts Express. For theming for the Hogwarts Express heading to Hogsmeade, this experience is not as immersive, strangely enough, as the one from King's Cross, in my opinion. It's still a lot of fun, it's still a really cool experience and a great ride, but you don't get to go through the iconic nine and three quarters wall, you don't see Hedwig, so just some differences there. So we gave it a four. For ride system and tech, this is an actual train that goes back and forth between Universal and Islands of Adventures. You can see the characters chatting, and the main aspect of the ride is a screen that shows some of the really neat Harry Potter characters and different locations. While it's very cool, it's not overtly inventive, so we gave it a three. For nostalgia and popularity, this one's hugely nostalgic and overtly popular, especially because anyone can ride it, so a five for them. 
For accessibility, this is one of the few rides that every single person can enjoy, so it easily gets a five. For must do if you're a Harry Potter fan, I think this is an absolutely a must-do. However, we can't give it a full five points because you do need a park hopping ticket to enjoy this ride, so we're gonna give it a four. Overall, that brings the Hogwarts Express, the Hogmeade Station, to a total of 21 points, putting it in our number five spot. Number four is one of my personal favorites, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. Look at him up there. For those who don't know, this is a really fun screen simulation ride taking you through the story of Spider-Man where you get to be a journalist for the Daily Bugle. I mean, who doesn't love Spider-Man? When it comes to theming, this ride's theme is on point and the queue actually feels pretty immersive since you get to walk through the Daily Bugle since, you know, you're a reporter there now. So, team gave this one four points. For Ride System and Tech, this ride opened in 1999 and still holds up. Between real use of pyro, the effects that make you feel like you're free falling, and other aspects of this ride, this tech was pretty advanced for the time and is honestly better than some of the newer rides that Universal has. So we gave this one a five. For nostalgia and popularity, this ride has been here forever and lots of people have really strong memories of it, <clears throat> me included, and with a character like Spider-Man, it's gonna be pretty popular. So we gave this one a five overall. When it comes to accessibility though, it's not the best. There is a height requirement and you do have to transfer out of your wheelchair to enjoy it. So this one gets a three. When it comes to must do for Spider-Man, it's so much fun. It's super immersive, it's crazy popular. And this ride is even based off of your favorite neighborhood vigilante. So we gave it a four. That means that Spider-Man gets a total of 21, claiming the number four spot on our list. Number three on our list, Jurassic Park River Adventure Ride. The theming of this ride is so cool. It's super immersive and the dinosaurs are a sight to see, y'all. For ride system and tech, the dinosaur animatronics and the drop at the end may get a really exciting ride system, but the animatronics are a little bit older inside the ride, so it's not as advanced. So we gave this one a four as a team. For nostalgia and popularity, you cannot overstate nostalgia or popularity for this ride. Iconic movie franchises and iconic Universal rides go hand in hand, so it gets a five. For accessibility, you do have to transfer out of this ride, and it's not really accommodating to all body types because of the bar that goes down. Add all of that with the height requirement, and unfortunately, it's only gonna get a two for accessibility. But with must do -ness, it's gonna make up for it. This ride's iconic. You have to do it. Even if you don't like water rides, this one gets a five out of five. For an overall score on this one, we're gonna give it a 21, ranking it number three on our list. Pretty good. Here it is, friends, number two. And honestly, I was a little bit surprised this one made it to number two because there are some accessibility issues, but the rest of the categories really bring the score up on this one. When it comes to theming, the theming for this ride is incredible. It continues with the new Jurassic Park movies and I truly feel like I'm stepping into them. I just had this conversation with Quincy the other day. The queue also has a really cool Raptor animatronic as well and that can't be ignored, so five out of five for theming. For ride system and tech, there are four inversions on this ride and it speeds up to 70 miles per hour. So this ride is amazing and I think pretty tech savvy. So again, team gave it five out of five. For nostalgia and popularity, this one is incredibly popular as it is the newest coaster here in Universal and the most exciting ride of it, arguably, available right now. Plus, there's the added movie franchise excitement, so five out of five. For accessibility for this one, unfortunately, there's not the best accessibility. There's a height requirement for this one. Everybody must transfer out of their wheelchairs and this is not made for all body types, so we're gonna give it a one. I will say with a track like this though, this ride is a must do in our opinion. If you're able to, you have to give it a try. And that's coming from somebody who does not even really like roller coasters. This one is pretty smooth depending on where you sit. Pro tip, try to get towards the front. And even as a non-roller coaster person, I think it's amazing. We think this one is a five out of five. Even though the accessibility is low on this one, it can't take away from how amazing this ride is, how amazing the theming is, and the technology. So that's gonna give our number two spot a total of 21 points. Our number one ride takes us back into the wizarding world. It makes life more interesting, you know? Do a little accent, even if it's bad. By no surprise to me and most fans of Islands of Adventure, our number one ride here is Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. 
When it comes to theming, I really cannot discuss it enough. This entire walkthrough queue is so detailed, from little things like Hagrid's Hut and the heart for Lily and James to the entirety of the Hogwarts ruins. This ride is just so immersive and well done, and we're big fans. For ride system and tech, this one is actually the most surprising and advanced roller coasters in our team's opinion. When it comes to nostalgia and popularity, this one is hands down the most popular ride in the park. There's a reason that we tell you to rope drop it. There's a reason that it's the highest wait time almost every single time I'm here at Islands of Adventure. Plus it's Hagrid, which is one of the most lovable characters in all of Harry Potter. So it's just gonna have that nostalgia aspect as well. So five out of five for nostalgia and popularity. Unfortunately for this one, the accessibility is going to bring the score down pretty low because you do have to be able to transfer out of your wheelchair. There's also a height requirement, and unfortunately because of the ride system, not all body types are accommodated, which is kind of a problem throughout Universal Rides in general. Because of all of that, it's going to be an overall score of a 2 for accessibility, which frankly, Universal, we can work on that, right? Finally, in my opinion, must do. Do I think this is a must do? Yeah, no question. This one is a must do in our opinion. We absolutely recommend it if you're able to. And because of that, we're gonna give it a five out of five. Overall, Hackers is gonna get a whopping score of 22, placing it in our number one spot, which frankly, I'm not surprised about. I think it deserves to be up there. And I wanna know if you think it deserves to be up there. Tell me what you guys think. So that is it. That is the definitive ranking of the Islands of Adventure rides. I was a little bit surprised. Some made it significantly higher on the list than I thought they would. I want to know, are you guys surprised? What do you think should be number one? Do you think Hagrid's is the right choice for number one? Tell us in the comments right now. Also, if you liked this video, go ahead and like it, subscribe. Now go watch our full Universal ride ranking up on the channel now. And I'll see you there.